most of our property here is really steep and we have become masters at growing on a slope. So today I'm going to show you some of the tips and tricks that I have learnt along the way to make sure that you can grow your own food even if all you have to work with is a hill. There are three main issues with trying to grow a garden on a hill. The first one is erosion. Any amount of bare soil and some rain and all your topsoil will end up at the bottom of your hill. The second one is being able to walk on your beds. If your garden beds are across the hill, building pathways just adds an extra challenge. And the third one is water. Water will always always run downhill and it will always try and find level. So making sure your garden beds all get the same amount of moisture is a real challenge. Now the big solution for growing vegetables on a hill is really to terrace the hill. If you are growing fruit plants or bushes or trees, terracing isn't usually quite so necessary. However, growing annual vegetables that you're gonna be wanting to access multiple times in a year, terracing really will just make your life that much easier. Now the thing with terracing of course is it feels like a lot of hard work especially if you're putting in really large gardens and if you have a big garden to do this is the time to get the heavy machinery in and just get someone who knows what they're doing with a digger or an excavator whatever you want to call them and to create nice big terraces for you. The steeper your land is, the smaller your terraces are going to have to be to be able to fit in there. And be sure to allow plenty of room for pathways as well. When you're digging your terraces, no matter how big they are, you want them to angle slightly downwards in towards the hill. And this will force any rain to run down into that back corner and to settle there. This serves two purposes. One, it will make that water then soak into the soil. You're basically creating very simple swales. And the other thing it will do is create a gutter that won't force all your topsoil to run off the tops of your garden beds and down into the next terrace. That side up against the base of the hill, that is the side that you want to put your pathways on. If rain isn't quite such an issue for where you are, you may like to do what we've done and we have just made each bed basically flat. They do taper ever so slightly back into the hill, but not by much. The next thing you're going to need is something to stop all that dirt from falling down the hill. If you are lucky, you can be very careful and just do it with dirt but that's not what I recommend because one good rainfall and you can lose your entire garden to the bottom of the hill. I recommend that on that front edge, you line it either with something like rocks, tires, timber, logs, piles of sticks, anything that can help hold that soil back so it doesn't disappear in a big rain event. Do you have any ideas for free or cheap retaining materials or ones that work particularly well? Please let me know about them in the comments down below. The upside to building the fronts of your terraces up is that instead of doing too much earthworks, what you can do is just add new soil to the top. If you're gonna be adding compost or doing lasagna gardening, anything, that you're bringing stuff into the garden. Adding a front on and just building it up is a lot less work than it is trying to dig them all out flat, especially if you're gonna be adding compost anyway. So these are our garden beds. We call these the survival garden because one, we just plant them and hope they survive, and two, it is where we plant our survival crop. So it's where we grow our potatoes, our corn, our beans and our pumpkins so they're basically planted and left to be for most of the season that's why we've got weed mat down on it we did not dig these at all all i did was put a whole lot of cardboard down put the fronts on and then filled them up with animal bedding out of the animal sheds whilst they look really nicely terraced now it's actually just two years of adding compost onto the tops. If you've heard of lasagna gardening, this is the perfect time to employ it. That's when you go and you get your scraps from people that you know. You can add food scraps, lawn scraps, old leaves, compost, manure, animal bedding, pretty much anything that can be composted is a perfect thing to add in layers on these terraces and they will build up your terrace, they will feed the soil, they'll give you really good dirt to plant in and save you actually having to dig. Now when it comes to watering your terrace beds, water will run downhill. We have drip tape set up to make sure that each of our beds get a similar amount. If you're relying on rainfall, just be aware that your bottom terrace is probably going to have more water than your top terrace is. So plant your plants according put the ones that need lots of water at the bottom and the ones that don't mind it a little drier you can put them at the top because you've made these beds flat on the tops the water runoff will be significantly minimized compared to how it was when it was a big hill because of the way that gravity works your nutrient flow will go from the top to the bottom as well so your bottom beds will end up with most of the nutrients especially if you don't have walls holding them up but even if you do 
the water that lands in the top will slowly leach your nutrients down to the bottom. So again, put your heavy feeders at the bottom and your lighter feeders at the top and be aware when you're adding more compost to add extra at the top of the hill. That's the problem we had in the strawberry garden. We used to have it as a hill, just a straight hill. We covered the whole thing in four inches of beautiful compost and lots of manure. We planted it up in strawberries and that first year we had so many strawberries and the two years after that really struggled. And what we'd found was the, just the, with the water running, even though it had weed mat over it, all of the nutrients, all of the compost, all of the amazing dirt had come all the way to the bottom of the hill and at the top the poor strawberries were stuck basically growing in clay and it's any wonder they were really struggling. So this year we've added these boards and we've refilled them up with more animal bedding and the plants are already doing so much better and we have high hopes for this season. If you've enjoyed this video you might also like to check out this other video all about starting your garden from scratch. Thanks for joining me today, I'll see you in the next one.